Okay, so welcome to another video. In this one, I just want to have some fun and make a little uh, beat or song kind of from scratch here. So I'm not using the default sounds on this. I have a different sample pack loaded on. It's called the Rojack sample pack, and there's a link to that in the description if you want to use the same one. I really like it. Um, I've made a few things with the sample pack already, so I have some idea of what's in it, but uh, I am still basically just kind of working from scratch here. So I loaded up an empty slot, I'm in my slot two, and uh, you know I just cleared it, so it's just empty. Oh, it's not empty. Okay, there we go. So function 16 clears it. And by the way, um, that's actually a toggle switch. So if you ever delete something accidentally, just hit the function 16 again and see it says undo. And now, you're, now your stuff's back in there, so there you go. So, but I did want to delete it, so there's that. Okay, so right now this is just going to be all the you know default samples one through or zero through nine loaded into these and in this particular sample pack they're kind of um, organized in groups of ten roughly so uh, so these first ones are kind of all meant to be like kick drum kind of sounds so I'll probably fast forward this a little bit because it can get a little tedious just watching somebody pick samples but um, we'll go ahead and give that a shot so So as I'm going through these, um, I do generally like to have my kick drum on one. There's no you know rule about that. It's just uh, just kind of a, a convenience, um, or it's just something that you get used to. And uh, it, it just means that you always know, like if I'm later on and I'm muting and performing in the song, I always know that if I mute one, that's muting my kick drum, right? That's just kind of an easy thing. And all I'm doing right now is I'm just going through and listening to them and seeing what jumps out at me at the moment. I think they all sound good in their own way. I'm just thinking about what sounds good right this moment. Okay, so now I'm into these kind of snare sounds. So let's go back and pick one of these. I'm gonna go with this one, number one. Okay, now number two, let's pick, oh, that was something in the middle. Let's go into the tens here, which is all the snare sounds. Well, not purely snare, but you know, they're all drum sounds. That one's cool. Okay, let's do that one. All right, so that's a symbol, obviously. Let's go into the twenties now. Ooh, tough choice, a lot of good ones in here, so. That one kind of jumped out at me, so I'll stick with that. Now let's see about the 40s for you. Okay, that really deep bass sound is always gonna be nice. Let's try some in the 50s. Let's try that one. Okay, this one will be in the 60s. So those are all chords, right? Piano chords. And you hear they all go together pretty well, so I might even use all of them. Let's see what else is in here. There's some kind of synth sounds. So again, a lot of those are kind of meant to go together. I like those original piano chords. So there's four of them, 60 through 63. Yeah, so I think I'm just going to say, I think my last four slots here, 7 through 10, I'm just going to use for those chords. So 7 will be 60, 8 will be 61, 9 will be 62, and 10 will be 63. So now these four, See, in any order, they're going to sound good. Um, now nine and ten are choke groups, meaning that if I have this one playing, uh, the next one's going to cut it off. So nine and ten will cut each other off, which I think is fine for this, but just be aware of that. Um, so, okay. Something else uh, that I kind of like to do when I'm started is just to get all the knobs into 
more or less the default setting. So any knob that has a notch like these ones, uh, you know, in this case it's at high noon, set, uh, set it to wherever the notch is. So the speed knob also has a notch at high noon. Um, level typically I have at max or at least close to max um, to start with. And then pan also has a notch at high noon. The attack and decay on both of these, uh, attack should be set to zero and decay should be set to max. That means they're doing nothing, right? So that's what you want just to start. Oops. Um, EG int also has a notch at high noon. So I'm keeping it there at zero. And then start point should be zero. Length should be max. Uh, high cut should be max. So that means that basically all these knobs are doing nothing right now. They're all kind of in their default settings. Um, tempo, whatever tempo you want. Sure, 93 sounds good. Swing, uh, I usually start with zero and then kind of add swing later if I want it. And reverb, same thing. I typically start with zero, add reverb later. I'll also just check, see I currently do not have reverb applied to anything and I also do not have reverse applied to anything. Likewise, loop is off and everything. Uh, motion sequencing is off. So basically this is, this is a blank slate, right? Which is generally how I like to start things. Not always, but I think it's good place to start, so. Cool. And you know, if later on in the song I change my mind about having four of these dedicated to chords, well, I can always change it later, right? No big deal. So I'm gonna just start with some sort of a beat. So, that's like my kick drum. That's my bass, if I wanna do kind of a drum and bassy type of thing, maybe. Um, so let's start by just sequencing a kick drum. All right, and so again, if you just wanna get the sense of the beat, I'm gonna start with the four on the floor pattern, even though I think I'm gonna change it, just because I like to use it to get a sense of where I'm setting my tempo, whatever kind of tempo feels right. So I've got just your basic, you know, one, five, nine, and 13, the four on the floor drum beat pattern. All right, and now you can set your tempo fast or slow, whatever you want. BPM sounds sounds right to me. Okay, so now let's do a more interesting drum pattern. Um, let's see, and I'm gonna just try to, I'm actually just gonna play it. So it's playing the sequencer but doing nothing, right? Because I have nothing entered. And I'm just gonna kind of randomly add some and take some away and see if I find something that I like. So we'll do that, and now I'm going to um, kind of jump ahead to that bass part, this one, that bass sound. So uh, that, I'm going to do a similar thing. Step mode, I'm going to play, and I'm going to add some bass sounds on top of that uh, kick drum I just did. is more. I think I like it with just those two actually. So we'll stick with that and then um, let's see what I want to do next. Okay so these are three just different percussion type sounds. So those ones uh, I'll try just live playing them. So I'm gonna hit play, hit record, and then uh, just play on just these three pads here just kind of randomly and see what I get. Okay, cool. 
So that's kind of what I mean. Uh, I mentioned this earlier that like I find it's kind of easiest to start in step mode. So the first one or two little bits that I put down, typically I do that in step mode. And then I'll add some of this kind of, I'd call this flare, right? These, this kind of percussive stuff. I'll add that in live record mode. To me, that workflow just makes sense. It's just easier. So now I've, I've got five parts uh, sequenced in there. And, you know, of course I can change them later, but it's good for now. Remember that my swing is applying to all five of them, right? Um, which is fine to me. That's sounding good right now. Okay, let's move on to part six. So that's just another kind of little... Okay, so then seven and ten is my chords. So this is kind of another percussive sound, but I want to do something different with it. I want to do something a little fancier. So I'm going to turn on loop mode. All right. And then I'm going to play with the, the length here, make it really short. And anytime you loop something and make it short, uh, you have created effectively your own little custom synth. It's known as a wave cycle synth. And actually, before I even play the rest of it, I'm going to solo just this one so I could just get it sounding the way I want and then I'll add it back in. So right now it's empty, right? I'll just add uh, just add one step. It doesn't really matter. Okay. So now... So here you can do all kinds of stuff with this. Again, loop mode, playing with length and start point. actually to play at that step. Let's see. Let me darken that sound a little bit. Okay. So let's turn everything else back on. And uh, I'll just play it live on top and see how it sounds. Yeah, okay. So what that's doing for me is kind of a droning sound, uh, just adding kind of texture to it, which I definitely like. So I'm just going to live record that one again. All right, so it's only two different triggers going, but because it's on loop mode, it basically maintains that drone the whole way through, right? I think something else I'm going to do with this one here, um, this kind of drone sound, is I'm going to add a bit of motion sequencing to pan. And what I want that to do is I want it to kind of shift left and right just a little bit in the stereo field. Um, they call that widening the stereo field. And uh, so let's, let's play with that. So I'm going to do function 12 to turn on motion sequencing only for my part 6 here. And, now, and then as it plays, I'm going to hit record and then play with the pan knob a little bit. I could do tons more stuff too, but uh, let's move on to these chords. I love those, they sound great. And so the thing with chords, right, uh, of course I can pitch them up and down. Um, or I could do the, the kind of other little trick where you hold function and turn this, right, and that will move them in semitones, uh, which is definitely helpful for writing little chord progressions. Um, so let's, I'm going to start with just something, yeah, I think I'll just do live record again. Why not? Okay. 
so you hear how that's starting to become just kind of too much sound. There's there's too many things stacking up there, right? Um, you know, in terms of the actual steps, there's not that many that I've entered uh, for six, seven, eight, nine, ten here, but yeah, it's just not sounding that good. So what do I want to do with that? Uh, obviously, I could just mute some parts, right? Something else I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into all the rest of these parts and just turn down the volume of it, turn down the level, uh, so that I can just kind of focus on these chords here. And I can, you know, always turn it up again later. And this can help with just kind of general ear fatigue, you know. When you're writing a song, you're going to have to listen to it over and over and over. So it's good just to keep the volume down a bit while you're playing with things. And even on these chords, I'll have them maybe about 100. Yeah, so of course you can also just use the volume knob here to change the global volume. I'm not going to mess with it because I'm recording and I have that, the levels set and everything. But, you know, if I was just messing around, I would also just turn this volume knob right here. So, oops. What am I doing here? There we go. Okay, so specifically what I did on this one, I do not like. It's just too many. So let me just clear that. Yeah, that's not bad. So what I'm thinking I might do is just use part eight here for something else. Uh, I think having three parts for my chords is plenty, so I'm just going to turn it to something else. Try this kind of synthy chord type E thing. Let's just see how this goes. do I want to do with this one? Let's try maybe pitching this one a bit. kind of like this little ranger in here with the pitch way up high and I'm going to add some motion sequencing there and so this part eight will just basically be its own little standalone melody for me so let's see if that works <laughs> I'm still not 100% sure on that. I'm going to come back to these chords because honestly they're getting kind of annoying. So, um, what do I want to do with them? I mean, it's totally legit. Oops, not solo, I want mute. It's totally legit to have a part of the song where they're all muted and then another part where I bring them in. And maybe that will sound good. So I'm just going to play around with that, kind of simulating live play and see if I like that. Yeah, 
it's okay. It's better. Um, it's better than them just playing constantly, right? Um, so let's see. What else might I want to do with this? And oftentimes when I kind of get to this point where I'm like, yeah, I'm not really sure what to do, I just, I'll just sit there and listen to it um, just over and over and things will kind of jump out at me. Or either that, or um, I will play it and just basically perform, just turn random things, see, you know, especially these knobs and kind of see uh, what jumps out at me, see what, may, maybe it'll give me ideas of what to do next. So a good tip, if you if there's a sound, like for me this sound 8 here that's doing all the crazy pitching up and down stuff, like I, I do like it but it's maybe a little bit too in your face. So you just turn down the high cut a little bit and it just kind of sends that sound a little bit more into the background. So there's that, um, and let's see if I want to do anything with these chords again. Yeah, I think I just want to redo the whole the whole chords thing, and I'm not really digging it anymore. So, um, even though I like the sounds individually, they're just not really working with the rest of what I got going on here. So. I'm just going to find new samples. Oh, this one might be good. Okay, so... Do another little melodic thing, turn motion sequencing on for this part, part seven. And then I'm going to attempt to um, do the the whole what do you call it? Semitones thing here. Let's try that. That's not going so well. Um, let's clear all that, and I believe there is another way to do it. I just kind of forget how. So, let's see. What I want it to do is go from zero to negative five, <clears throat> which is a third uh, interval of a third. So, um, let's see. I think I can do this. <laughs> There's a way to do it per step, I just kind of always forget. So, um, so, if I record that, hold that. There it 
this. Okay, so I kind of always half forget how to do that, but what you do, turn on step mode. First you hit record, then you hold down the step that you want, then you turn this to be wherever it is that you want it to be. And then you let go, record again, and it should now, uh, this one should be at the default speed, this one should be down. Okay, so let's keep going with this one. So let's see, right now I'm not using parts 9 and 10 at all. I'm thinking, turn those, well, I'll turn part 9 on. I'm thinking maybe what I want to add is uh, some, uh, some 16th notes in here to give their, give their something, I don't know, fast, speedy. So right now it's this chord, but I want something short. Something like that. Let's try you. Every step. And then I'll just randomly remove a few. There's a thing, so let's leave that for now. Um, 10, I don't know, I might just leave 10 off. Kind of feel like I already have too much sound. Um, well, let's find something, because it's always good to have something during live play to come back to. So, unmute you. Do you know what I'm talking about? That's kind of interesting. So that's just a little bit of like a, I think it's, it's a record player either starting or stopping, like coming to a stop. So let's do that. That'll just be a subtle little atmospheric kind of sound. And uh, I'll just have it, I'm curious what that sounds like on all 16. Let's just try it. Huh, it's kind of interesting actually. Okay, so because uh, 9 and 10 are in this choke group, you see it says Alt in the little line in between them, they're connected. So they can't both play at once, basically. Um, 10 will always choke out 9. So right now, when I have every single one turned on, we only hear 10. Even though 9 is programmed, we're only hearing 10, right? Here, I'll uh, mute the rest to make that super obvious. So we're just hearing that. Now if I mute 10, Oh, where's my nine? I have steps. Why aren't we hearing them? Oh, I guess it still mutes it. It still chokes it out even when it's muted. Hm, didn't realize that. Okay. Um, if I go and take out some of these, see, then we start hearing my part nine coming through in the gaps. It's maybe a little interesting. Just leave it there and see what happens. I'm gonna do more to this sound number seven here. that. 
I don't know. I think I'm going to come back to it. I'm just still not happy with my part seven here. I'm not sure what exactly to do with it. Maybe it's just I need a different sample. Let's try it. What's great is, right, I can play this and just change my sample as it's going. All right, and all my motion sequencing is still applying to the new sample. That's kind of nice. Yeah, a bit more of a clean tone. Okay, let's try that. Okay, I'm gonna leave that for now, and then let's keep going with the unmuting. we're finally getting somewhere. Um, I'm listening to this is making me nod my head a bit and that's always a good sign. Um, let's see, is there anything else I want to do? I've already got some reverb. Haven't used reverse at all. Could try a few things in reverse. Not that one. Sometimes it's also good to not use reverse in kind of your main, uh, your main little song, but keep it as a performance element. Um, so that, that's what I might do with this one. So at this point, uh, I really should have saved sooner than this, but I'm going to save it now. So I'm in my slot two. Let's save it there. There we go. Now it's saved. Um, I absolutely have written a whole song and then just powered the thing off without saving, and yeah, it's gone. So I <laughs> try not to do that. Um, all right, I'm just going to mess around with this a bit and see if anything else calls to me. sounded good. So generally, like, if I can just mess around like that, kind of have fun, especially with just the muting and bringing parts in and out, then uh, I feel like I'm pretty close. Um, so I think at this point, I'm gonna, I'll stop this video here, and I'll try doing a separate video where I just jam and have fun, and we'll see how it sounds.